this is what I call my stump of fame. Any lure, unless I lost it, there's two, a couple missing, that has caught me a fish over eight pounds gets retired to the stump of fame. Maybe not immediately, but hopefully in time to make it onto the stump of fame. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Uh, we are just getting off Orange Lake outside of Gainesville, Florida. Ted Lincoln took me on a tour of his little honey holes and we got a really nice fish on a old school gimmick lure. But today in part two, we are in Ted's studio. He's gonna give us a tour of what might just be the ultimate fishing man cave I have ever seen. <laughs> Stick around. N known as the Lincoln Lounge. <laughs> known as the Lincoln Lounge. <laughs> Follow me. You're aware of the fire I had uh, the, earlier this year. Thanks to everybody who donated. And I did promise people custom painted baits. They're coming. I have the list. It's just a long list. I have to match the emails and everything. But they're on their way. And that was a scary deal. So you were driving your boat down the road. And what happened? You looked in your rearview mirror and saw... I was actually driving a different way back from Orange Lake. And I looked back. And back here at the bilge... I just looked in my rearview mirror and there was literally flames coming up over my motor. This whole area was slightly different than it all melted during that fire. But and you got was, it out and... As far as I can tell, it was just a short and gas fumes. And, and then the air from driving just ignited it. So. But this boat's a little sentimental, isn't it? My dad bought this boat brand new in 1986. We stood at the boatyard together and picked it out. And I have probably rebuilt it six times now. But this last build uh, before the rebuild from the fire is when it got blue and I totally redid it. It's going to eventually match the van, which is going to be painted to match, which was also my dad's last of... All the vans he owned my entire life, he always owned a GMC van or Chevy van. That was his last one, so I'm trying to keep that one going too. But yeah, CNF, original motor. Um, I've had aluminum decks since the early, or early 2000s, way before Tiny Boat Nation did. But yeah, this boat has caught me multiple double digits, including my PB128, so... It's a very capable little boat. It's aluminum, eighth inch aluminum diamond plate. And I didn't extend the decks. This is the original layout of the boat. At some point I need to redo it again because I have to fix some rivets and do some other stuff. So I'm going to extend the casting deck a little further back, put a little more storage. But um, instead of doing plywood and carpet, I did aluminum diamond plate and this is white bed liner. And it is way cooler in the summer. I just, with this last upgrade from the fire, I went to EVA foam, but I had blue carpet that was, in the dead of the summer, it was too hot to touch. Now it's a lot cooler. But this diamond plate was the best thing I ever did. So, so what, what is this glorious wall of my, swim baits? This is my swim bait wall. I've, I've apparently acquired a <laughs> bit of a collection I might have put them all up there just so you guys could get a tour. Usually about a quarter of these are in a box somewhere in my boat. But I started fishing big swim baits with my buddy Atypical Outdoors. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. Check him out. And it's addictive. What can I say? Most of these baits I've either traded for or um, done some kind of service for. I haven't bought all of them. So I've slowly acquired them over the last three or four years. And I would say that most of these, oh, I forgot. Most of these I have caught a fish with. Not every single one. I can say every single one I've at least got a bite on. That's why they're still here. 
I like the Depths 250 slide swimmer. I just got that. That is my newest edition. And it's probably your heaviest edition as well. It's pretty up there. The the Sneaky Pete, or the Papa Pete's right up there with it. I also have... Uh, Ooh, one. is that a nice uh, wooden lunker punker? That's a resin one. A resin one? But nice. A plastic one. But this is my first custom shiner paint job I did. So I paint custom... I do custom airbrush lure painting now as well. And this was my practice. Like this is one in one evening before I went fishing. I was like, I need a golden shiner. But um, I haven't cut anything out of depths yet, but I've only had it for about a month. So I like that little magnetic uh, hook hook hanger. That's nice. Yeah, it's got, it, it, it makes it easy to store everything. And this was a rod holder that somebody gave me, and I didn't like it as a rod holder, but it works great for swim bait tails, for the big soft swim baits. And then these are just tool... Um, for like screwdrivers and stuff for pegboard and it holds the other swim baits really well. Got a few G Rat baits. I haven't cut anything on the big rat. I've cut a lot on the G Rat swim baits. And then this is just other bass fishing stuff on my these are the top waters and whatnot that aren't in boxes that are usually on my boat, which I took all of them out to go fish with Chris today. <laughs> <laughs> and then he and then he snuck a swim jig into his tackle box. Which, I didn't throw it though. He didn't throw it. I snuck it sure. in though. I didn't throw it. I love the pegboard though. That's a that's a beautiful sight. That, and then here are all the various boxes that go in and out of my boat and kayak. This my the mag, eight inch mag draft has been one of my biggest producers, new producers for me this year. I've I've had the 10 inch for a while and then the six inch, but the eight inches seem to be the magic number. There's one in the case on the stump of fame, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And what are these guys? These are some JSJ, um, I forget the name of this exact bait, but this is my good friend, Josh. We worked in a vintage Vespa shop together in San Francisco in the early 2000s before he went on to start JSJ. This is uh, the Bait Sanity Explorer Guild. This is one of the baits that helped win the tournament that I did with them in the Hookup Tackle last year. I won like a thousand bucks for fishing that for three months. Ooh. It is an awesome, this is an amazing actual bluegill. Yeah, I put sticky sharp hooks on it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> um, it's an amazing actual bluegill glide bait. It's not a swim, it's a glide. Mm. Because the Gantrell is more of a swim that can glide. This is, yeah. So it was three months long, I, and you did it by length, and I caught multiple eights and sixes all on these. I had to retire. I, had, I have a floating and a sinking version and two different patterns. And the floating version from that contest is on the stump of fame. I bought this reel in 1999 when... Josh St. John's from JSJ said he was going to take me bass fishing. I didn't have a reel. So I went and I had enough money on my credit card to buy a Calcutta. And I've had this reel since then and it has recently found its way onto my 7.9 crankbait setup with a new Gomexis handle, power handle. I was going to say, that is not the stock handle because that is the same reel that I had. Yeah. I think I got it when I graduated high school. Yeah. It was that was the year, and that was literally the top of the line. For this Shimano. thing was so nice. That was it. Yeah, it was the first one I think with that continuous um, anti-reverse. Yeah, that was like continuous, continuous. Yeah, not it, kind of like every quarter inch. It's a. Uh, it went to the roller clutch over just the dog system, dog and paw system, but so you know this reel, right? I put this reel on this rod, and it's a whole new reel. It's. It, this reel had been waiting for this rod for 20 something years and now I use this thing almost every day again and it's the same exact reel I bought 20 some odd years ago that looks pretty sexy though with that handle on there doesn't it and that rod I mean it's like they're made for each other I just thought you'd appreciate wow. that I still fish 20 year old stuff every day yeah this is my new big swim bait setup Ooh. so this is the Dobbins uh, Mike Buka collab. This is the Bull Shad swim bait rod by Dobbins. It's an 8.3 
heavy, fast, moderate. It's a lot. But they use numbers. I forget the exact number system. Um, Corrado 300 with the big old Gomexis power handle on it. I was throwing a weedless modified weedless 8 inch uh, mag draft that I cut the harness out and made weedless myself. But so this rod is capable of setting the hook on a weedless bait like this. But also great for throwing the, like the Depths 250 and obviously anything bullshad oriented. This is my new favorite swim bait setup. Ooh. And my normal swim bait setup, like more, most glide baits, I throw on the Dobbins Fury, which is, you know, everybody knows about this, but I throw it on the Corrado 200, hmm. the bigger handle, because I do so much targeted, like short casts, because I'll be fishing a glide bait in that hydrilla we're in. So, you, like, I might only make a 50 foot cast. But it's still got enough line that if I need to make a real cast, I can do it. But I don't have to hold that 300 in my hand all day. I can palm this a little better. And then this is just my broomstick for weedless mm. swim baits. The 13 fishing. I mean, I fixed my friend uh, Patrick had four of these Calcutta 250s. He moved here from Southern California and I cleaned them for him. And in exchange for doing it, he gave me one. And so then I matched that up with this. This is the 13 Fishing DeFi uh, swim bait rod. And it's an $80 rod. Handles soft swim baits incredibly. It's a eight foot extra heavy. I mean, this is, I have, biggest fish I've caught on this so far is just under 10 on a soft plastic in heavy pads and I just turned her head around and just cranked and she's just like tried to turn and she's like no I'm going this way <laughs> yeah this is the rod that I snapped the 30 pound fluoro leader on too though I was like no more fluoro 30 pound big game is what I use for a leader on that rod this is my airbrush station I'd been wanting to do some custom airbrushing or custom painted lures for a while if you haven't figured out I'm a full-time artist it's my day job so of course I couldn't not paint lures I also painted a bunch of custom bikes I've done stuff for some pretty big bike companies and um, I basically slowly acquired all this stuff to do it and it wasn't until Bates Sanity asked me to do a charity um, job where I painted 25 glide baits for them in a month so that pretty made, much made me set this up and figure out how to make it work. So now I have a pretty good system. I got an airbrush here, my little thing. I use magnets so stuff stays stuck. Got an iPad for reference material. That's me. Like I said, reference material. Um, it's an old kitchen hood hooked up to the same ventilation I use for my laser cutter. So it's pretty good. And yeah, I'm slowly building up colors. I use this paint or spray chrome in my art. And it turns out it's big in lure making too. And that's how I get this gold. It's not actual paint. It's, um, it's mirroring stuff. It's silver nitrate in solution. And I have the whole setup to do that. I have a mobile airbrush station too. So I, this is my spray booth. I have some... Uh, bull shad uh glide baits in there and some spros this is all for the owner of, of 44 tackle chris his personal baits i'm painting for him but so here's some slightly defective uh versions of the i have to fix for bait sanity but this was the color i did in their antidote it is a black chrome smelt which then I did my own version, which is a black chrome mullet, which I hopefully will be making more of. Here in my studio, every now and then, there's a few other artists in the area that have studios out here. We've had a few open studios. And every now and then, some dude will walk in that I don't know, and he'll just walk around the whole time like this. Not even looking at the art. And 
a light bulb goes off in their head. You can see, like, I didn't know you could actually live like this in Gainesville. Apparently you can. I've made it. Been here since 2007, slowly building this out. You might even know some of these stickers in these places. <laughs> South of the border, that's getting. <laughs> So this is the office of the Lincoln Lounge. This is where all my videos are edited. More are coming soon. I have a new hard drive coming. I'm, I'm out of hard drive space this week, but next week I should be good. But yes, this is the Lincoln Lounge. The first thing I built when I moved into this space is the bar, which we're going to show you at the end. But one of the things I do is um, Mother of Pearl inlay based a lot of it on Star Wars, some of it on other stuff like Moby Dick and whatnot. But to create a piece, I take a figurine or a toy or a model and I take a photo of it in a way so I'm not stealing a frame from the actual movie to make it even that more original. And I actually had um, Mr. George Lucas buy two of them. So I've sold Star Wars to Star Wars guy. But so that's why all the Star Wars, every figure, model, or toy in this case was a piece that I made, including the stuff above the anime and the whale stuff. So this is what I call my stump of fame. Any lure, unless I lost it, there's two, a couple missing, that has caught me a fish over eight pounds, gets retired to the stump of fame. Maybe not immediately, but hopefully in time to make it onto the stump of fame. There's a couple of fancy swim baits in there that I had to keep throwing like this uh, unique baits, uh, Gilmatic, he sent it to me and I caught the 1014 on it on the third cast. So of course I had to fish it for a little longer before it made it to the stump. PB was on a seven inch Sticko, Florida rigged. You can watch my video on that. Um, I was never a fan of the chatterbait until one day I tied it on and I got a 9.4 and an 811 on the same day on this this is the original chatterbait with a easy swimmer with a tail cut. So it's more like a fluke. Um, this is a Pro Point Lures swim bait that I designed the color. It's gold and clear with a touch of black. I call it a touch of bling is the name of the color. That caught me a 9.4 this year on Panasofsky. I think Chris was supposed to be with me on that trip. I have a free rig. It's a new thing for me. I don't know if you know about the free rig. It's like a Texas rig, but with a drop shot weight instead of a um, bullet weight that's not pegged. So dr caught, a, what was it, a 9.8 and an 8.10 on this just the other day. Uh, I got another 10 on a Sticko, a couple of Sticko 10s. My first 10 pounder was on the Kinky Beaver, punching it. One of my favorite baits, Reaction Innovation. It's still my go-to punching bait ever since that day. I mean, there's a ton of baits. This is the bait I was mentioning. That's this other um, Explorer Gill from the Bait Sanity uh, tournament that it, with the hookup, it was called the Hookup Sanity. And I caught uh, several eights, a bunch of sixes in the tournament. So that got retired. I bought this. Mag draft from 44 tackle, took it out, and in the first hour I fished it, I caught a 10 pounder, so it immediately got retired. And this, there's so many in here, but I'll end with this Booyah Pad Crasher on the end here. It's very bait, was from the retired after the best day of bass fishing I've ever had, where both my scale didn't work properly and my GoPro died, but I caught 52 bass, one was 10 pounds. I got that much. One was seven and a half. There was 10 over five. And I literally went home because I couldn't reel in any more fish because they're all in heavy cover, all frog fishing. I had bruises on my ribs from setting the hook. Both my thumbs were bleeding. I had to switch thumbs to thumb them. And this one frog did that all. It lasted the whole day. But that was it. It was done after that. It just sinks now. So. We're closing the Stump of Fame side so we can give you a peek at my vintage lure side. Some of these you will recognize from Chris's channel. Some of them he's even sent me. There's at least, well, one card, one, you sent me that uh, spot back there, the lipless. 
Um, I think all of the Johnson Silver Minnow black ones he sent me are in my tackle box, so they're not in here. A few of these lures were my dad's and my uncle's. Some were mine that I bought and I've had them so long they're actually vintage. And then the rest I've either found or collected from me or friends have given them to me over the years. So I don't collect vintage lures as a thing, but I also don't pass up them when I find them. And this is what I've ended up with. And some other random like, vintage corkscrew from some ship somewhere. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Got a couple helicopter lures just in case. I see that. I see that. I got the Budweiser. The big bud. The big bud. Gary thinks this might be the most valuable little lure, but I, he hasn't seen it in person. Which one? This little crankbait here. Well, that looks like a Wright McGill Miracle Minnow. You would know better than me. I think that might be a Miracle Minnow. Let me see. You can pull it out. Yeah. So, I think that's a Miracle Minnow. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Is that worth something? Is this the same thing, too? Uh, that's a different one. I don't know what that one is. No, that's... But that's definitely... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, uh, How about this guy? I think that's a Dalton special there. Yeah, so there's the Dalton Flash was one of the baits I was trying to get before you showed up. And it was the plastic one they came out with. Oh. And that little Dalton Flash is how I got good at topwater fishing. So I was trying to get one before he got here. Gary has one somewhere, but he couldn't find it in time. But I mean, I have a creek chub in the box, a couple other creek chubs here and there. I mean, this was a lure that I got when I went, got, I went barramundi fishing in Thailand and the guide made these on the side. Never put hooks on it because I just bought it because it looked so cool. I see but it's thing. a big old chug popper. That's made for catching big fish. Look at how it's built. That's, oh yeah. Oh gosh. Do you, do you know about barramundi? They're mm -hmm. like a cross between a snook and a tarpon. Yes. And they get like giant. Giant, yeah. Giant, giant. So, fan of the, uh, what are these called again? The spoons? Oh, the Epping or Daredevils. Yeah, the Daredevils. My dad would always tell the story of losing the 10 pounder at the cemetery pond in Wareham, Massachusetts on a, one of those spoons. That and the 10 pounder he la lost when we first moved to Gainesville on a Cotton Cordell spot. So I always grew up with that spoon in the spot. And then when rubber worms came out, he always had those ready. But that's all he ever fished were those three things. Uh, Chris, a book you might be seeing a review on his channel. Well, this is good because moving to Florida, I need to kind of figure out what the lay of the land is. So we've got an updated copy of the Florida Fisherman's Handbook. Uh, is this this year's version? Uh, it's like 1970-something, so it's close. It looks but... like this year's version. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. very nice, man. Well, cheers. Thanks cheers. again. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tour of the Lincoln Lounge. I definitely had a blast in Gainesville this week, and when we get to Florida a little bit more full-time, we're definitely going to be some, spending some time here checking out Orange Lake a little bit more, the Rainbow River as well, and some of Ted's other honey holes in and around Gainesville. So uh, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Um, if you don't already subscribe to uh, Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life, definitely head on over there. Give him a follow and a like on his videos. Definitely well worth a sub. And until next time, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. And don't forget, you can buy hats from this <laughs> Yeah, Yes, you can. <laughs> Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.